Okay, so you're here because you want to know a little bit more about ELO. Well, let's find out where and how it come about and then move on to how it works. The ELO rating system was created by a Hungarian physics professor by the name of Arped Emerick ELO, who was a master level player and active participant in the United States Chess Federation from its founding in 1939. The USCF used an numerical rating system devised by Kenneth Harkness. The Harkness system was used between 1950s and the 1960s. It was a reasonably fair, but in some cases it increased rating which observers considered inaccurate. So, on behalf of the USCF, ELO devised a new system with a more sound statistical basis, which was then implemented in the 1960s, which I think is kind of funny because Harkness was the USCS business manager between the 1952 and 1959. Could there be a connection there that Harkness leaving and then a year later a new system comes in? I found no evidence to actually kind of, yeah, really kind of get this, but it's kind of interesting to say the least. Then in the 1970s, ELO's system was also adopted by the World Chess Federation. ELO's central assumption was that the performance of each player in each game is a normal distribution of random variables. Although a player might perform slightly better or slightly worse from one game to the next, ELO assumed that the mean value of the performances of any given player changes only slowly over time. He then went on to add that further assumption is necessary because chess performance in that sense is still not measurable. You can't look at a sequence of moves and say that's the performance of a 2030 player. Performances can only be derived from wins, draws and losses. So if a player wins a game, he is assumed to have performed at a higher level than his opponent for that game. On the other hand, if he loses, he would have performed at a lower level and the draw means they performed equally. Now we got all that out of the way, what does it all mean? Basically, the rating system will work out who it thinks should win and lose each game. During the placement, your wins and losses set the range of your skill, your wins being the bottom end and the losses being the top end. Now you're placed, you will want to start working up the ranks. The ELO rating will pick you up against an opponent and it will also know which player should win before the match even starts. If the person the ELO system predicts will win does in fact win, they're only going to gain a small amount of rating as it's a game they should have won anyway. Same goes for the loser, they're only going to lose a small amount too. Now this is where the upset kicks in. If the predicted winner loses, this is where they lose a large amount of rating and the predicted loser on the other hand gains a lot. This is basically where the higher rated player has played a lower skill than their rating suggests or they've simply just had a bad game. We've all been there or the lower rated player is either a better player working slowly up the ranks, had a blinding game, or just managed to capitalise on the mistakes of the other player. The ELO rating is pretty flawless in 1v1 situations, which it was designed for, like Chess and StarCraft 2 and so on, but MOBAs have taken it on board as well, where it's 5v5. Obviously you can't measure one player's skill against another. Riot, the creators of League of Legends, have also confirmed that the ELO rating system is not the best, but to be honest to all MOBAs, there isn't a perfect way to do it as of yet. Riot have moved away from the full ELO system to a tiered division system, which primarily still uses the ELO. Each MOBA will add their own additions to the system to try and fully fulfill their needs. Now, ELO hell most players are experiencing is still somewhat relative. If you're a high rating player in a low rating avatar, you should still be able to add enough key things to a game to increase your chances of winning. But on the other hand, there are some cases where people have been lucky enough to feed like hell, yet still win because the teams carried them. That will only get them so far, but it does affect players that have worked their way up there. Until there's a better rating system for multiplayer games, we as gamers just have to suck it up and get on with it. So, I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this little bit of insight on ELO, like Arpid Emmerich ELO, the Hungarian physics professor. I know I learned a lot when I was doing this video. So, if you'd like to see some more future stuff like this, or MOBA gameplays that I do, or anything else like that, subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave comments as well, we love all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I've been your host, Risty, and goodbye.